Hey everyone, welcome back to RT Investing. My name is Rian and this is the fourth episode on the channel. Today I will look at dollar cost averaging. Now, this is a concept or a strategy that people use when they are investing their money. Now, like I've stated in some of my previous videos that, you know, there are times when we dollar cost average and there are times when we don't. So there's a general rule which says time in the market beats timing the market. So you should always try to be rather be in the market longer, you know, than trying to time the market. But in the event where, you know, let's say you don't have like a bulk piece of cash, uh, you know, or like a lump sum of money and you only, you know, you can only afford to invest monthly, which most of us, you know, that is the situation. Um, you know, if you inherit like a big piece of money, then it's probably better to just invest all at once um, because, you know, especially if you're going to invest, you know, for the long term, then the rule applies to you. But if you have, um, you know, if you earn your money monthly and you want to invest monthly, then the dollar cost average strategy is probably the best for you as it allows you to buy into the market consistently and then also lowering your total um, price, your average buying price. All right, so I'm going to try my best to explain this. Um, let's look at uh, Tesla stock. I'm just going to move my face out of the way. All right, so let's look at Tesla stock over the past year. Let's say you decided to buy on the 1st of February and only, you know, invested once. Then you would have bought Tesla stock at a share price of $839. Now, I have created a little Excel document here just for the purpose of this example. And I will show you how your average buy price, you know, is being affected if you um, dollar cost average. So I'm just going to type here average, um, average price. Okay, so this is the average stock price. Okay, where is my mouse? There you go. All right, so if you bought on the 1st of February, you would have paid 839. Then the 1st of March, you would have paid 700. There you go, 718. 1st of April, 661. Uh, then let's look at the 1st of May. 1st of May was probably not a trading day. So let's go for the 30th of April. So that's 709. So let's go now for the 1st of uh, June, which is 623. Then the 1st of July, which is 677. Then on the 1st of August, probably wasn't a trading day. Let's go for 30th of July. That is 687. Then the 1st of September was 734. And then the 1st of October, Probably wasn't it? Oh, there you go, 775. And then on the 1st of November, you know, the price started rising. So 1208. One, All right. So you can see that I'm just going to put in my face here. So you can see that if you bought um, only once, if you've entered the market once in February, you would have paid a price of $839. And it would have taken you at least, if you look at this graph, it would have taken you at least up to, I would say the 15th of October to, uh, you know, just get to a point where the the market is at the same price where you, you bought. So it would have, it would have taken nine months for you to get to a point where you would have started to make some profit. All right. If you dollar cost averaged into the market monthly, all right, then the average buy price of your Tesla stock would have been at $763. Now, if we do some basic math here, if we, um, let's say we compare it to the price in November, which was also the peak or close to the peak. So let's say you entered the market at 839. We divide that by 128 and we times it by 100. 
that means it's almost 30, it's like 31, 3.5%, um, 30.5% that we have, you know, of growth that you would have had if you only invested, uh, you know, once in February. But you would have had, let's use, if you dollar cost average into the market, you would have had quite substantially more. So if we use this and we say, uh, uh, sorry. Then you would have had 36% of growth. So you can see that, you know, by being consistent, by consistently investing into the markets, you know, it doesn't matter what the price does, it just smooths out the right. So, you know, if the trend is up, then you would have, you know, by dollar cost averaging, you will, ha you will have, you know, the average price going up and the same would be going down. But what makes dollar cost averaging strategy nice is, is when the market goes down, you know, you, you in effect just lowers that, that overall price that you are buying into the market. Um, you know, it's, it's very seldom that markets, especially like the stock market, especially the US stock market, it's very seldom that they just go down indefinitely. Um, you know, if, and even if they do, they just slightly, if you just keep on buying in, even if they go very, very low, they, they just have to turn around once you know, and you'll be in profit a lot sooner, a lot, lot sooner, and you'll be able to exit, you know, that trade a lot sooner, you won't have to wait, you know, for that trade to, um, you know, or for that stock price to be at the price where you initially bought. So it's always a good idea to just keep on buying in, buying in, buying in, you know, as, um, you know, the, the price falls. Um, but obviously, this is not for everything. If you are buying into something that is bleeding out and that's probably going to, you know, die like the Evergrande in China, Evergrande stock. If you are keep, if you keep on buying that, you know, if you or if you kept on buying that, you know, they just removed it from the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So, you know, that that would have been, you know, something that is not good. So always do your research. But if it is something that you believe will turn around and it's something that will do well in the future, uh, dollar cost averaging is probably the best solution for you to, you know, be profitable at the end. All right. So now I'm going to look at, I'm just going to show you my um, eToro RT Invest portfolio. So on McLovin, on, this is my personal account. So on my personal account, I am dollar cost averaging into the RT Invest copy portfolio. Now, if you want to know how to do that, please go and have a look at the first episode, the first video on this channel. Um, but just to show you how the dollar cost average strategy works, um, you know, just just with one example, I'm going to use I'm going to use the Korean stock market as an example. All right. If I go to RT Invest, the portfolio itself, like the peer portfolio where I opened the trades once before, you can see that you know, EWY is at a loss of 16.19%. But remember, this was one trade opened. I wonder if we would see the date here. There you go. So it was opened on the 16th of June, uh, 2021. And I opened that at a price of $93.61 per share. All right. Now, if we go to my personal account where I dollar cost average in, if I now go to the trades, you know, that I opened by, you know, investing multiple times into this copy portfolio, you can see that EWY is only at 8% loss. All right. And you can see that if I click on it, these are the amount of times that I bought into the Korean um, stock market. So you can see that these are these are all the dates where I, you know, added money, you know, funds to the RT Invest copy portfolio. And you can see that I have now opened, um, you know, at multiple, at multiple prices. All right. So it means that the total, the total amount, my total buy in price is a lot lower than 91, you know, that where I originally opened it on the RT Invest portfolio. So this shows you this shows you that by being consistent, you know, you just get that buy price all 
the way down. So now the Korean stock price, the stock market should just turn around. Let's do this. Should just turn around a little bit. If we look at the chart, you can see my average buy price is probably somewhere in the 80s now and not 91 anymore. So it means that this price only or this this yeah, the stock price just have to turn around a little bit up to somewhere here and then i will be in a profit already on the korean stock exchange and i don't have to wait until it gets back to 91 where the original trade was opened on rt invest and the longer it goes down the more i would dollar cost average into this portfolio and the lower this buy price will become so the longer it stays down or you know, even go sideways, the lower my price will be. So in effect, someday it would just have to turn out around a little bit and I will be in profit. Now, I what I like about the RT Invest portfolio is that you know you get to dollar cost average into all of these markets um, at the same time. So you are consistently buying some crypto, consistently buying into the American stock exchanges, into, you know, all these different sectors. And I've made a video, I've made a video on exactly how RT Invest is constructed. I think it's episode two on the channel. So go and have a look at that. And yes, so hopefully you can also apply the dollar cost uh, average strategy uh, in your personal finance. Uh, if you are still you know, very unsure of how to invest or, you know, just what it entails, then please feel free to sign up on to eToro and then copy the RT Invest copy portfolio. And then as a rule, if you can afford it, dollar cost average into it every month, every week, whenever you can, uh, you need a minimum of $200 um, to open up all the trades. So in effect, basically then dollar cost average into all the different um, stocks or ETFs or crypto um, trades that I have open and over time we should see you know some very good growth you know as we are consistently buying into those markets but that's it for from my side today guys I hope that you enjoyed this video I hope that it helps uh, if it does please consider subscribing please give this video a like uh, that would be appreciated and then also you can find the sign up link to eToro uh, in the description of this video and i hope to see you soon thank you and goodbye